ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to our English news edition coming to you from Canal Algérie. I'm your host, Mesa Dumas, to the headlines. The President of the Constitutional Court, Omar Belhaj, participates in a seminar organized in Ankara on the occasion of the commemoration of the 60th anniversary of the creation of the Turkish Constitutional Court. The Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, Lieutenant General Saeed Shangriha, on a working and inspection visit to the second military region. The inhumane conditions of the Sahrawi activists in Moroccan prisons are denounced by the international organizations. And we will listen also to the interview by the Polisario lawyer, Gilles Devar. Those were today's headlines. First in our news, the Office of the Council of the Nation, chaired by Salah Gujil, President of the Council, welcomed the measures announced by the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, during his periodic meeting with representatives of the national press. Salah Gujil stressed the need to intensify coordination, especially in this period marked by an economic challenge imposed by the changes that the world is experiencing on different levels and the current health situation caused by the coronavirus pandemic. The Bureau recalled that the courageous measures taken resulted in the creation of thousands of jobs, the relaunch of hundreds of frozen projects, as well as the unemployment benefit. The President of the Council of the Nation considers these measures to be the crowning and effective realization of the commitment of the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun. The President of the Constitutional Court, Omar Belhaj, took part in a seminar organized in Ankara on the occasion of the commemoration of the 60th anniversary of the creation of the Turkish Constitutional Court. This meeting will be held until the 28th of the current month. More details with Manal Ammari. During the opening session, the countries participating at this meeting presented the Constitutional Court's experiences in the protection of rights and freedoms, with a focus on Turkey as a pioneer in the field that is celebrating the 60th anniversary of the creation of its Constitutional Court. On this occasion, the President of the Constitutional Court, Omar Bilhaj, highlighted Algeria's experience with setting up this new body and its role as the backbone of the rule of law in accordance with the reforms undertaken by the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun. As the first president of the Algerian Constitutional Court installed six months ago, this body is considered as a fundamental pillar of deep political reforms undertaken by the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, since his election. Omar Bilhad emphasized the court's important role in the building of institutions and the consecration of the rule of law in favor of the new provisions of the 2020 Constitution. The President of the Republic attaches a great importance to the institutional building process with the installation of the Constitutional Court at its head. It is part of the consolidation of the rule of law through the deepening of political reforms undertaken by the President of the Republic. The Algerian Constitutional Court is intended to be a new milestone in the institutional building of Algeria and the strengthening of democratic practices. After commending the quality of the Algerian-Turkish relations, the head of the Constitutional Court highlighted the two countries' political will to strengthen bilateral cooperation in this field. As part of his visits to the various military regions, Lieutenant General Saeed Shangriha, Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, carried out on Monday on Tuesday a working and inspection visit to the headquarters of the second military region. The details with Leticia Sadqawi. At the beginning and after the welcoming ceremony by Major General Jamal Hajj Rousi, Commander of the Second Military Region, the Lieutenant General Saeed Shangriha, Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, held a meeting with the cadres and personnel of the 8th Armored Division. The Lieutenant General gave an orientation speech 
followed by video conference by all the personnel of the units of the region, at the beginning of which he assured that the national memory is the beating heart of the nation, the artery that nourishes its present and its future, and the lighthouse that illuminates the different successive generations. Lieutenant General stated that at a time when Algeria is preparing to celebrate an event that is one of the most sacred and dear to our hearts, namely the 60th anniversary of the recovery of our national sovereignty from the abject colonizer, it is incumbent upon us to always remember the heroes of Algeria who were faithful to the homeland and gave their lives so that it would be independent. After a great revolution, thanks to which the Algerian people freed themselves from a long colonial night, he further noted that it was an independence paid at a high price by Imam's caravans of our valiant martyrs who made the ultimate sacrifice for emancipation, freedom, and the recovery of national sovereignty. The lieutenant general also added that we must always be aware that national memory is the beating heart of the nation the artery that nourishes its present and future, and the beacon that guides successive generations on the path of building a strong, secure, and prosperous country. Inspired by the values of our proud ancestors, made of loyalty, heroism, and sacrifice. The lieutenant general stressed that the safeguarding of our national memory is a sacred duty and an immense responsibility that belongs to all, recalling that the role of the citizen in the face of the various threats is no less important than that of the units of the National People's Army on duty. On the matter, he further articulated that safeguarding our national memory, rich in eternal glories, that drawing on its noble values and immutable principles are a sacred duty and an immense responsibility that belongs to all of us. As the President of the Republic, Supreme Chief of the Armed Forces, Minister of National Defense has often stressed, he further affirmed that our memory, which we will never abandon, is the inexhaustible source from which we draw to meet challenges, whatever their nature and origin, to strengthen the foundations of our strength and the unity of our nation. As such, the role of the citizen who shows conscience and patriotism in the face of various threats is no less important than that which falls to the valiant units of the National People's Army on duty. As a result, it is up to the citizen today, much more than in the past, to show discernment and contribute with his great patriotic sense to the preservation of the security and stability of our country in order to thwart all the attempts of the enemies of the nation. This nation, for which millions of Shuhada have sacrificed themselves throughout its great history. At the end of the meeting, the Lieutenant General gave a set of guidelines and instructions to the executives and personnel of the region, which are mostly part of the enhancement of the degree of vigilance and security of the various public infrastructures in order to allow citizens to celebrate the festival of Eid al-Fitr in a climate of tranquility and serenity. The Mujahid, or war veteran and retired Major General Ahsan Tafer, was buried on Tuesday in Al Alia Cemetery here in Algiers in the presence of Major General Ammar Athamniya, commander of the land forces, multiple personalities, members of his family, and citizens. As part of the fight against terrorism and thanks to the efforts of the National People's Army, a terrorist surrendered on Monday to the military authorities in Ingizam in the 6th military region. Barrahman Ibrahim, also known as Al Qandari Ibrahim, who joined the terrorist groups in 2014, was in his position of a Kalashnikov type submachine gun, a radio, as well as large quantities of ammunition. This operation highlights the high vigilance and permanent availability of our armed forces across the national territory. Saida bin Habilis submitted on Monday her resignation from her post as, as president of the Algerian Red Crescent. 
On the international scene, the inhumane conditions of the Sahrawi activists in Moroccan prisons crossed the limits, a situation that was denounced by a number of international organizations. More details with Rania al -Bahri. Put in isolation since April the 3rd, 2022, the health of the Sahrawi prisoners Hassan Dah and Zawil Hussein continues to deteriorate due to hunger strike for more than 20 days. The two prisoners suffer from pain in the kidneys, stomach and considerable weight loss. No medical care was provided to them. They were also prohibited from using the prison landline for about 10 days. The League for the Protection of the Sahrawi Prisoners in Moroccan Prisons has denounced the bad treatment as well as the poor detention conditions of the Sahrawi political prisoners. The Sahrawi activists imprisoned in the central prison of Qnitra in Morocco are determined to continue their fight, in particular through a hunger strike, until they obtain all their fundamental rights. For its part, the non-governmental organization Amnesty International called on human rights defenders to send a letter to the head of the Moroccan government asking him to put an end to the bad treatment imposed on the Sahrawi political prisoners like Mohamed Hadi, who is placed in solitary confinement since 2017. The non-governmental organization urged the Moroccan government to urgently provide them with adequate medical care, regular and unhindered access to their families and lawyers, and that the conditions of detention can play with international law and standards. The Polisario lawyer Gilles Dever was interviewed by our journalist Nawal Abbada. He talked about the inhumane practices against the Sahrawi political activists in Gdim Izik in Moroccan jails that are deprived of their basic human rights. Let's have a listen. I begin by saying that all the facts about the Mahzen are well known, even by the West. No one can accept the double standards where we can't denounce events in a certain region of the world. The detainees began the hunger strike to protest against the detention conditions, especially the medical side. They protested the fact that they are victims of torture and lack of medical care in the isolation in prison, which are all against international laws. They even prevented them from family visits, the Red Cross and international organizations visits. This protest proves that the detainees have reached their limit, and I remind you that this situation is illegal from the start. These events go against the Geneva Conventions. It is time to ask the West. France and Spain, what are you doing? Are you a representation of inequality and double standards? Or are you ready to do something on the humanitarian Sahrawi cause? The movement considers these detainees as political activists who have no place in prison. To the concerned enterprises who are doing their small businesses, we say that you have blood on your hands, you are financing these crimes. At last, the suffering of these people only makes us fight harder. The Spanish Fox Party accuses Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez of submission to Morocco, refining from asking to include Ceuta and Melilla into the NATO and preserving the territorial integrity of Spain, especially with the invasions of the migrants in these autonomous cities. In response, the government indicated that no amendment to the NATO was on its agenda. In occupied Palestinian territories, a Palestinian young man was martyred on Monday due to severe wounds sustained by the Zionist occupation forces in the West Bank. For his part, the president, Mohammed Abbas, praised the role of the Palestinian community established in the United States of America in conveying the voice of the Palestinian people and their aspiration for freedom and independence. In the province of Burj Buaririj, a new medical hospital was inaugurated on Tuesday with more than 40 medical specialists. This hospital is a reference model, according to the health ministry. The details with Najah Tayyar. Equipped with advanced equipment and with several specialities, Hospital Infrastructure for Medical Surgeries Ahmed Ben Abid at Burj Buaririj will open its doors and will ensure the best health service. This new hospital doubtlessly will absorb the pressure from the other hospitals of our wilaya. It contains no less than 10 services dedicated to different surgical specialities, plus 29 medical units with a capacity of 150 beds. 
The high-quality performance equipment available in this structure allow the medical staff to achieve their mission in good conditions, which will provide a suitable care to the patients. An infrastructure as such is a value added to our wilaya, especially its important reception capacity. With its modern equipment, this new hospital will help us to provide suitable care for our patients. Following the last instructions of the President of the Republic regarding the emergency services in hospitals, this new hospital has been built according to the international standards. Hope that this emergency unit will have all the specialities in order to ensure a high-quality service. In addition to this new infrastructure, a training center for paramedic will also open, which consequently will create more jobs in the region. That was it for our news edition. Thanks for tuning in to our program. Sahas Hapkun.